Hello and thank you for joining us here at Civil War Digital Digest. I'm Jeremy. And I'm Felicia. And today we're going to be making a peach pie out of Beetle's Dime Cookbook. And we're going to be using the lard paste that we've made in previous episodes. So if you haven't watched that yet, I encourage you to go back, watch that lard paste come together, and then see how to use it here in a dish. Our first step here um, is going to be to uh, grease up that pie plate really well. And while she's doing that, I'm gonna read you the recipe. A peach pie. Take, a, take juicy and mellow peaches, peel, stone, and slice them. Then put them in a deep pie plate lined with the under crust. Sprinkle through them sufficient quantity of sugar, equally distributed. Put in about a tablespoon of water. Dust a little flour over the top. Cover with a rather thick crust and bake nearly an hour. So the first thing we're gonna do here after she's got that greased is be able to roll out one of the pie paste that were done earlier. I'm gonna lay that down in and then we're gonna be using actually canned peaches and the directions do talk about using you know, fresh and juicy peaches. Uh, it's winter time here and we don't have access to fresh fruit at this time period you know, on, on a farm in the 19th century. But what we do have is peaches that we canned back when peaches were in season. And we're starting to run low on those too at this point. But this peach pie is gonna be an amazing treat for this time of year. So one of the things that we're gonna to have to do a little bit different than what's in the directions is we're gonna take these jarred peaches and we're going to drain them. So instead of uh, peeling and slicing and pitting, I'm just gonna drain the juice off here. Cause we don't wanna have all that syrup that they're preserved in in the pie, that would be way too much moisture. All right, so we have all of our peaches nice and drained and in the bowl. And then Felicia's just working on finishing up our paste here for the pie. So she's just gonna go around and trim all of the edges and the extra, and we're gonna use that extra. Uh, don't, you don't wanna get rid of it. Uh, we're gonna use the extra for a little bit of decoration to make the pie nice and pretty. But you could also, again, roll it up and make some crackers or something out of it that you could use for a breakfast or to complement your dinner. Uh, another option could even be to take those, roll them back out and cut them into dumplings to go into a stew or maybe into a meat pie. So next thing you want to do is poke holes in your pie crust um, to keep it from kind of bubbling up um, and cracking. Now, today we're not going to blind bake this. It's not in the, the simple instructions from the cookbook, um, but you could blind bake it, meaning that we could put some pie weights in there or dried beans uh, and then put it into the oven to start the cooking process on this bottom crust and taking it back out and then doing the filling. That could help ensure that you don't end up with a soggy crust, but uh, it's not in the cookbook, so we're just gonna go for it. So I think now we're ready to start layering our peaches in and drained as much of the juice off as we could. Um, it does talk about using a tablespoon of water. Um, we're gonna skip that, because again, since these were canned peaches, I think they've retained quite a bit of, of moisture in there, so I don't think we'll need that extra tablespoon of water. I'm kind of pulling them out one by one to make sure we don't get any extra juice in there. Because we're going to put sugar on it and that's going to pull more out of it. So we don't want anything extra. So like the Beatles Dime Cookbook said, we got a layer of peaches and now we're going to put a layer of sugar. Now we'll put another layer of peaches. <clears throat> now when we canned our peaches, we did a very, very light syrup. Uh, we don't like super sweet peaches. We like them to, to taste as fresh as possible. So if you are going to use canned peaches like we are today because you don't have fresh peaches available, judge the amount of sugar that you need based off of the syrup that was in there. A heavier syrup you're going to need less sugar and a lighter syrup you're going to want a little bit more. You can kind of see how much juice was left in there so by pulling each one out it helped leave some of that moisture behind. Now the last step here before we get that top paste done is the directions say to put a uh, some sprinkle some flour across the top. And it's probably gonna help thicken up the, the juice that's gonna be inside the pie. Uh, and probably also help make sure that the top crust doesn't stick to the peaches either. So I'm just cutting out some leaf decorations to put on the top of our pie. Uh, we want it to look really nice and inviting and pretty when we set it down on the table. So I'm just gonna cut some leaf shapes so we can attach to the top of our pie crust for that. So now that Jeremy's made the decorations for the pie, we're gonna go ahead and put the top pie crust on. Roll this out and hope it's big enough. Perfect. Okay. And I'm gonna cut it first and then I will. And then you're gonna attach it? Yeah. And just 
use some water to wet the crust and then attach it. So make sure you get a nice seal between the top and bottom crust. So you can do that by using just a little bit of water, and rubbing it along there, and then press it down. We're actually just using the leftover peach juice. So she's going to press all the way around, again, get a nice seal, and it makes it look nice too. So she's doing a bit of a scalloped edge by using her fingertips to press that down. You could also use the fork and go the fork around uh, as well, which will give you those nice lines. So we want to make sure we're doing here and pressing firm enough uh, to seal the pie up because this is going to get bubbly and juicy and preferably we'd like to keep that inside the pie and not bubbling out. It also will help it where the crust, top and bottom crust won't separate as they bake and hopefully they stay together as one. All right. And now I'm just going to lay all of the rest of our leaves on here, our decoration. Just again taking a little bit of water or the peach juice and just laying them around. And this is purely just decoration, ornament. So however you want to lay them, that is all up to you. And then we need to vent the pie. If we don't, um, the whole top could actually blow off there as it has that steam. So I'm just gonna cut a few vents here in between our leaves. Now it's time to get it into the oven and get it baking. Uh, we have a preheated bake kettle behind us that we're going to be sliding this in. At home, I'd say somewhere probably between 325, 350 degrees into your oven. And it's going to take probably that hour to maybe even an hour and a half, uh, depending on that temperature and depending on how golden uh, dark color you want to get on that crust. We've done it at home. Um, it's been about 90 minutes to get the pie where I want it. All right, so the peach pie is baked. We just pulled it out of the bake kettle a little bit ago. We let it cool off so we could handle it and, and eat it, because that's what we really want to do. Um, I think it turned out pretty nice. Nice golden brown crust there with that lard paste. <clears throat> Let's find out what we got. Uh, we did end up baking it. It was probably a good hour and a half in the bake kettle. Listen to that crunchy flakiness. Does sound delicious. I get these good peaches out of there. All right, so I think it was still a little warm. We should have let it cool. We got a little anxious. Um, having made this recipe at home, if you let it sit till it's completely cool, the juices really solidify more into a syrup um, and it held together a lot nicer. But let's see what we got. Mmm. <laughs> All right, so it's a peach pie. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. The crust, um, especially the top crust, is nice and flaky and crunchy and um, almost buttery, even though there, it was lard. Uh, and the peaches still taste very fresh, and it's not overly sweet. I, <laughs> coming out of wintertime in the 19th century, this would be amazing. amazing. <laughs> so a very simple dish, a great way to connect with history making this peach pie. And before you do that though, skip the store-bought crust, take the time, uh, watch the lard paste episode, make your own pie crust, you'll be rewarded. Definitely worth it. Absolutely. So on behalf of Civil War Digital Digest and Our Farm History Acres, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.